and that takes care of Wednesday's weather. Now here's Sandy Hill. Okay, Steve, thank you. 24 minutes before the hour right now. Doctors in Baltimore have invented a new device that could make life a lot easier and safer for a million American diabetics who depend on insulin injections. Now, this is an insulin pump. It's about the size of a hockey puck. It's inserted beneath the skin, between the navel and the ribs. Patients then use a separate external radio transmitter to tell the pump how much insulin to release into the system. Jackson Pietro is the first diabetic to have one of these pumps implanted into his body. And he's joining us from John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. And also Dr. Christopher Sadek, who is the director of the Diabetes Center at that hospital, is with us today. And we're so happy that you are. Doctor, I, this is not the first implantable pump, but what makes it so special? What makes it so different? Well, this pump is programmable, it's controlled from the outside, and it delivers the insulin in a variable rate, which means that at each meal time, the patient can go ahead and take the right amount of insulin that they will require for that particular meal. So I think the variable rate is the most important feature of this pump. Okay, I understand you have one, if the camera can pull back, you have one in your hands there. Show us, show us what exactly it looks like. If well, you here it is. It, it's about three inches in diameter and three quarters of an inch thick and uh, it has a little refill port right in the middle of it uh, so that about every three months we would refill it with a syringe right through the skin mm. and the uh, insulin would be drawn right into the reservoir. It has a catheter then which uh, delivers the insulin into the abdomen. Mr. Pietro, that looks big. How does it, is it comfortable? How does it feel to you? Do you know it's there? I've had it for eight days now. I, I am conscious that it's there, and I'm very glad that it's there. Oh, I'm sure you are. But just from a, a comfort standpoint, are, are there are there things that you cannot do that that that, uh, that the you only did before? things I can't. The only things I can't do are the result of the of the very recent surgery. I mean, it's a little hard right now to tie my shoe, but uh, <laughs> getting better every day. <laughs> okay. One of the things that's not difficult, though, is to control that amount. You show us how exactly that works, if you would, and maybe the doctor and the two of you can explain to us controlling the Certainly. amount of insulin. Well, first of all, this is the That's the uh, transmitter patient. that you carry with you. This is the transmitter. We call it the patient programming unit. All right. And what I do is to determine the amount of insulin that I think I'm going to need or the kind of command that I will need. And I have several choices here. I dial one. I'll set it now to command number six, which delivers 6.4 units of insulin in a very short period of time. How do you know, though, that that's what you need? Does the computer also tell you how much you need at that point? I have to figure it out from taking a blood sugar test and also knowing what, what other either activities or meals I'm going to have immediately following. I understand. All right. Are, is this going to be implanted in others soon, doctor? We are going to continue the uh, initial implantations. We're going to put it in a person again next Monday, another subject, and then uh, we expect to have about 20 during the course of the first year implanted at Johns Hopkins and about uh, 40 around the country during the first couple of years. Well, as we noted at the outset, there's probably a million people around the country who have diabetes. At what point are we going to see 20,000 or 40,000, or is that realistic to contemplate? Well, it's realistic co to contemplate. Uh, we don't know exactly when it's going to happen. This is an investigation. This is to try to show whether it works, to demonstrate that it is safe and uh, effective. And once that's done, we would hope to do that in a period of about two years. Once that's accomplished, then we would apply to the FDA to get it generally available for all the diabetic people that you talk about. I know you're excited about this from a technological standpoint. And Mr. Pietro, just from a life change, I'm sure you are as well. Give us a sense of what you're looking forward to at this point? Well, I'm looking forward to a, a life which is very similar in many ways to the one I had under the previous pump, which was an externally worn pump, right. but without, without the inconveniences. There will be no needles in my skin. I won't oh. have to worry about infusion sets and whether the insulin will run out in, in a short period of time or skin infections, that sort of thing. That's a, that's a I, great I, thing I, to look I expect forward to. I expect to be much freer in, in movements, activities, everything else. We thank you both very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back. It's 20, it's 20 minutes before the hour. And next up, we're going to take a look at some...